Hey folks, Sophia here. I happened to get a drone 10 out of 10 escalation, and I figured I'd run it in my Loki and bring you along and show you how that's done, and talk a little bit about the Loki and Tengu fit and approach, and why you might be running 10 out of 10s in your strategic cruisers. So uh, escalations are things you can get from certain combat anomalies. The 10 out of 10, which is the good one, at least in drone space, has a small chance of spawning or escalating, I suppose is the right verb, after completing a squad, a patrol, or a horde. I think it's like a 2%, 3%, 5% chance. I don't know. I doubt it's like officially published either. Although people probably run them enough to have a pretty big data set to calculate it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, these are significantly harder than the actual sites at least at the end, um, uh, you need to be able to put out 700 DPS to kill the final boss in the final room, which has most of the loot. And you probably want like a blinged tank to be able to do it quickly and efficiently without worrying about incoming damage. Uh, so like theoretically an Ishtar can put out 700 DPS, but the number of rats and things and the way you're gonna have to kite and warp out and warp back in, I guess it's not about just being able to complete it, it's about how long it takes to complete it. And it's about the reward, of course. So this 10 out of 10 um, is going to pay out about 400 million-esque. That's mostly in loot, and then a little bit in the bounties as well, sort of. And then some drone salvage, which counts as part of the loot, I suppose. But, you know, somewhere in the 400 million range, give or take 50 million. Um, in the Tengu, I'm going to be doing it in 45 minutes. <laughs> And same with, oh, sorry, in the Loki, I'm gonna be doing it in 45 minutes. Same with the Tengu. Um, if you were doing it in like a T2 fit Ishtar, <laughs> I suspect you'd struggle to spend hours and hours and lose thousands of drones to complete it. And if you're doing it in a Marauder, you can get it down to like 20 or 30 minutes. So yeah, it's not just about getting the 400 million, it's about how long it takes to do that. Because there is a big market for these 10 out of 10s, at least in PandaFam. If you belong to it, you can join Zulu's Escalation Bazaar and you can sell any escalations you happen to get after completing one of those three sites I mentioned for 130 mil on it, or roughly that, 130 million. So if it's gonna take you hours and be painfully focused and you're gonna lose drones and you're gonna to have to fly blingy ships all around to actually get to where the escalations are, then it's a lot easier just to sell it for 130 million. Conversely, if you have scout alts and can blitz the site in half an hour in your Marauder, then it's worth it to buy it for 130 million because then you're making like 200 million in profit in half an hour or an hour or something. So that's kind of how the uh, uh, economics of it works out. Uh, so let me show you my fit first and why I really like running these in T3Cs. And that's because they can spawn all over the place, including in like neutral or hostile space, which is a little bit sketchier. <laughs> and T3Cs you can fit to travel safely. Without scouts, you can basically be impervious um, traveling around, right? So if we look at my fit here, this is my travel fit. Um, I have, let me simulate, with prop off. So I have an under seat three second align time, which is really critical. This means that when I warp off a gate, I'm in warp on the third tick. People have basically one tick to catch me, but on the tick where they're trying to catch me, I'm actually going to be cloaking because T3Cs can also fit cloaks. So I'm gonna cloak and I'm gonna hit my nully. So if I jump into a bubble, I can warp. And I also have a warp core stabilizer so that three things are gonna have to get points on me or they're just gonna need faction points and scrams and stuff. Basically uncatchable, right? I say that probably jinxing myself. <laughs> but I mean, come on, you jump into a gate camp, you're bubbled, you hit the nully so you can warp, you hit the warp core stab so that you need three points on you, then you hit warp and hit cloak on the next tick. And then nobody's gonna have time to burn a decloak on you because you're already off, right? I mean, the only way you could really get caught if you don't mess it up is if uh, you uh, spawn in within two kilometers of something so that you can't cloak, but that's pretty unlikely. And then even beyond that, they're going to need like three scepters or a seaboat ship within range. Yeah, 
very, very safe to travel. And it's a good thing because it's kind of expensive too, what with Dead Space mods. But we'll talk more about the combat fit once we get there. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be heading over to 6 Tech 8, which is where my escalation is. And I believe that's an industry park, right? Yeah, so we have lots of things here. Cool. So it's not, it's friendly space and there's citadels in system. So I'm just going to quickly check that I have all my stuff. I have my refit for when I'm doing combat, my drones, my hacker card. This is important. It costs about 17 million and it's going to allow me to take a shortcut inside the site. You also need plasma physics for trained up to use it. Um, and it's going to allow me to complete the site in 45 minutes instead of like an hour and a half. So you definitely want that. And ammo. I want 10,000 rage and 5,000 javelin. This is our EM. We're using hams to reach that critical minimum DPS to break the final um, boss. Or I guess you don't actually need that much to break her, but you need about that much to not spend hours and hours and hours. And then I also have Nova for a special thing I'll show you once we're in the final room. Um, I guess I don't need this mobile depot since we're going to a safe place or to a place where I have citadels. So I'll leave that in the bean star. And do I have the right clone in as well? Let me check. Yes. So I have a bunch of implants here. The only two important ones are these uh, cap ones so that I'm cap stable. I mean, they're not that important, but I'm kind of lazy, so I want to be using them. All right, cool. But we'll talk more about the combat fit once we get there. And for now, let's head off. And we have arrived. So time to refit into our combat fit. Um, I honestly do prefer doing these sort of 10 out of 10 escalations in the Tengu compared to the Loki. Um, they end up being practically exactly the same damage with the Loki maybe having a bit more at times because it has the option to do different types of damage without the being locked into kinetic and the drones. But having your drones ends up just kind of being a pain so it's a little bit easier in the Tengu when you're running these a lot. Not that I run them a lot. Uh, so I do prefer the Tengu to it. But the Loki is a more like all-around ship that you're going to use more in PvP. And you can use in different types of PvE more effectively. So I decided to show it in the Loki also because controlling your drones, there's a couple tricks for that that uh, make things a little bit more technical. And that's worthwhile to show on uh, a video, I figured. All right, so let's load up what we're going to be using. Um, for this fit, I'm not going to talk too much about tank, because basically your tank is somewhat optional. Not optional at all. But uh, so in this fit, I'm running a Pith X type. No, a Pith A type, rather. Shield booster with a single operation solidifier T1 there. And this is offline, so that's why it fits. Um, and then two multi-spec invulnerability fields. So I'm repping according to the in-game thing, 189 raw HP per second. But you can see my resists, and you can use Pypha, of course, to get better details on this. But this is sort of like what my tank looks like. And what this allows me to do is completely ignore incoming damage until the very last room. So I'm just fully focused on killing things as quickly as possible. And then in the last room, I'm going to rely on my tank a little bit to start putting damage on the final boss, the drone hive mother thing, strain hive mother, Karuri or something, which is the big tanky. You need to like spend multiple, multiple clips killing her. Um... But yeah, so my tank isn't really much of a consideration other than I want to be able to ignore all incoming damage. You could, and I have in the past, just run a T2 fit, like a uh, Bogan type uh, setup, and it works just as well, except I have to be a little bit more cognizant and I have to sort of kite things off more. I want to be using, so we're using hams here, heavy assault missiles for the max damage. 
and I want to be able to use Rage as much as possible. And as you can see, unless you can't see, if I load Rage up, I've got a flight range of 35 kilometers according to in-game, but Pypha will show you that it's 30 kilometers to have 100% uh, applying due to range, like flight times, right? So basically I'm going to be shooting hams out to 30 kilometers for most of the time. And I want to be able to just burn in and be within 30 kilometers of the bad guy so I can apply them. Um, yeah, so my tank is just sort of um, accommodating that. And then down here, I've got three BCSs and then two application ones that help with range a bit and application against smaller things. Um, and then these are two range rigs as well. Hydraulic bay thrusters so that it's easier to count volleys. So that way um, I'm not firing off missiles when the ones that are going to kill them are already in flight, right? Yeah, and then if you were flying the Tengu version of this, I'm not gonna share an actual fit here, but it's basically the same, um, except that the Tengu has a range bonus so that you can shoot out to 40 kilometers <laughs> instead of 30, uh, which helps. Um, it doesn't have drones though, right? And it's kinetic locked. So if you're flying the Tengu, you do want to be using Kinetic throughout the entire site. Some people like to use EM because they think that the drone rats, that's their weakest resist, and that's true. However, um, the resists of the drone rats are 20% better Kinetic than EM, while the Tengu's damage bonus is 25% Kinetic over EM. So you still want to be using Kinetic, plus those resists only apply to shields and armor and then only some shields and armor um so yeah you want to be using kinetic throughout the entire site regardless uh yeah and then so the tang uh the loki is currently doing how much dps 800 dps with missiles and then another 100 with drones on top of that bring it up to around 900 dps the Tengu is going to be doing about 1,000 DPS with Kinetic Rage, which, because of the 20% resists, is going to be effectively about 800 DPS. So it's the exact same DPS. You can think of the Loki as having drones as extra. However, the Tengu has more range, so it's easier to apply the missiles. And the Loki, you have to micromanage your drones so they don't get killed, and so that they're applying to help you deal with the fact that you aren't always going to be in range to apply your missiles. So they end up the same, with the Tengu being a little bit easier, the Loki maybe being slightly better. I don't think you can say that. I think the Tengu and Loki are essentially, effectively, exactly the same for running drone 10 out of 10s. Even for a tank, the Tengu has an EM hole, which you typically plug with two Tech 2 EM shield rigs. However, the only time we're really going to be worrying about incoming damage is in the final room. And EM is actually, even though drones in general do Omni damage, EM isn't a big focus in the final room when we're most worried about it. So in the Tengu fit, you can just get away with one EM uh, rig to sort of semi plug the hole. And then the Tengu actually has higher kinetic and thermal resists, which are gonna matter more um, in the final room. So the tank ends up working out as well and then since you're only half plugging the EM hole, you can fit a range mod on the Tengu, which gives it that solid 40. I mean, it all ends up working out exactly the same. <laughs> uh, there's actually one Tengu I fly where you don't even have to refit the um, subsystems. You can fly it with the covert and the agility subsystems with three lows that are all damage based and it still works out essentially the same as well. Maybe slightly worse application because you don't have those um, lows that are helping with the SIG and speed of your application, but I mean, you're doing more damage with your missiles <laughs> and the Loki's not gonna have drones out for small stuff anyways. So yeah. All right, is there anything else to talk about here? Um, we talked about range, we talked about tank, we talked about application. Oh yes, we're also bringing these Nova Javelins. There's one bot, There's one type of ship in the last room where um, half a clip of Nova Javelin will kill it, but it would take like a full clip of um, EM Javelin. So we wanna bring just 
We're only going to use, I think, 666 of these, but I have a couple extra. Um, and then a hard shell for in case things go south. And then paste in case we need to repair. For drones, we want max DPS drones. So this is going to be nothing in reserve. We want to make sure we keep them alive. And yeah, we're good to go. Um, the nullifier offline doesn't have any downsides. And oh, right, the cap. So as you can see, we are cap stable here at 1%. And that's because I have two 3% cap um, implants in, as I showed you earlier. This guy, and I don't know if they're 3%, but the level three, maybe it's a different amount of percent. And this guy, um, if you wanted to, you could like fit a roofer or whatever it is, cap battery. If you want to spend a couple hundred million more and then not have to worry about your um, implants as much, or I'm sure there's other ways you could fill around with this. Maybe if you pick a lower tier shield booster, then it won't use as much cap. But this is what I use, so there you go. Here's the fit. Whoa. Takes up a lot of room with those subsystems. Ta-da. All right, uh, let's get to it. So basically, um, <laughs> every single room is just going to be starting with Javelin and killing frigates that can tackle you. And then we're going to swap to Rage and kill the other things and then move on to the next room. And it's really that simple until the final room. Uh, so I won't be taking you through all of this. I'll show it all, but I won't be talking the whole time because it really is that straightforward. As I said, if you're flying a cheaper one, then you might need to consider things more. I just have a faction there for travel in the rare, rare case I do get it by anything. Since we're cap stable, I'll turn everything on. Oh, I guess talking about cap stability, you could also just pulse your um, shield booster if you wanted to. That would work as well. All right, let's dive on in. And uh, yeah, hopefully we don't get distracted by anything or anyone coming into local. And I don't have a timer on, but you'll just have to take my word for it that it's about 45 minutes, probably an hour if you include all the travel time and stuff. If you're buying them off the market though, like Zulus, 130 million plus 17 million for this, 145 million, 47 million, plus maybe 3 million in rocket and missiles. Pretty good deal, right? That's like 250, 200 million per hour. All right, so here we are, and we're just gonna start burning and turn on our prop and kill the frigates. I'm not launching my drones yet because I don't want smaller stuff to kill them. And then, as I said, we're, we ideally should be counting volleys here. And if you do this enough, I'm sure you can figure out how many of these you have to fire off. So I'm gonna fire off five at this one. I think that was five or was it four? And see if that kills it. Hey, it did. So I guess these, what, these frigates have about five, maybe six depending on the type. Oh, I stopped paying attention there. <laughs> I don't do these very often. I'm not very good at them. It's kind of like by the number. Oh, I did it again. All right, anyways, frigate's gone. I'm switching to rage. Okay, so there are uh, two, sorry, three types of battleships you want to look for. One of them are the elite drones. The other one are the matriarchs. And the last one, I don't see any of them, but they are the queens. Elite drones, uh, matriarchs, and queens will all burn away from you out of your rage range and like spread out like crazily on grid. So you want to try and kill them first and also kind of corral them. So like this guy here is a patriarch, so I don't have to worry about him. But these elite drone parasites, I kind of want to push them towards the Stargate. Um, and that way you can, whatchamacallit, group them together and sort of save time and prevent yourself from having to burn around on grid. So you can see these two here are matriarchs and they're just like booking it away from me. Fortunately towards the Stargate, but I don't know if I'll have them all killed before they get really far away. 
All right, so that's the elite drones, the matriarchs, and the queens, though we don't have any queens on field. I'm just going to kill this guy first. The elite drones also drop um, 500 million, sorry, 500,000 isk value uh, elite drone AI components or something. So you can pick those up if you want. I usually don't bother, but I mean, if that's something you're interested in, then that's cool too. Let's see where that wreck is so I can go grab it. Oh, it's down here. Cool, just so you guys can see. And then these cruisers, they will follow you around. So it's nice to keep them alive and just sort of shoot them if you're out of range of anything else. I'm gonna kill them all now though, so that I can put out my drones without having to worry about it and then show you what I do with drones so that I don't have to count my volleys too much. So even though these guys are only seven kilometers away, they're still gonna be dead before, like I can stop shoot, oh, <laughs> I could have stopped shooting before that. You can stop shooting before they die and then the missiles that are still on route will still kill them, right? So like there I stopped and started on this guy and that guy still died. All right, here's the loot you can get from elite drones if you want. Rogue drone component, cool. All right, so a couple cruisers left. And you can see how these queens are, or matriarchs rather, are like running away from me, which is unfortunate, but I'm talking to you, so I'm not focused on optimizing everything. <laughs> All right, let's get my drones out. And we'll kill this elite drone guy next. So what I like to do is put my missiles and my drones on the same parasite, or on the same rat rather, are there any of these guys here? These are patriarchs. Patriarchs, cool. So this is gonna be my next target over here. So I'm gonna start approaching them so that I'm in range of my hams. And then I'm gonna keep shooting this one until it's in like half hull or so. And then I'm gonna to switch to my next target and let my drones finish it off. So that way I don't have to worry about counting volleys because my drones are gonna be very efficient in like whittling it down at the very end. Again, these four guys are just gonna follow me around, so I'm not worried about them at all. And I am going to try and go kill these queens, sorry, matriarchs. All right, so I stopped firing on this guy, and now I'm switching to the next one, and I'm gonna leave this one for my drones to finish off. So like my missiles are constantly applying, nothing wasted, right? And then I'm gonna start approaching the next one. And this is sort of what I have set up. Like my drones are finishing this one off, I'm applying my main damage to the closest one and I'm moving into range of the next one. And now we switch off drones onto this one and continue along our merry way. So this one will be next. Oh, and I can switch my missiles onto this one and then start approaching the next one. As you can see, I haven't even looked at my tank. I mean, maybe when all the cruisers were on, it was doing something, but like I could just turn all my tank mods off now if I wanted to. It's not until the last room where tank really saves you any time, as long as it's not like a minimal tank. Oh, you want to be shooting stuff, not just talking to yourself. All right, so I'll finish off these guys. And there's also this here, deserted star base in the first room. You can blow that up and it'll give you some sort of loot. I'll come back once everything else is dead and see if that's actually worthwhile. I don't think it is, but it's so convenient that I usually do get it.
All right, well, those drones finish off the last one. Um, I did pretty poorly on some of my uh, <laughs> min-maxing damage there. Lots of wasted shots, anyways. Uh, here's what you can get from that storage container thing. Two and a half million. Nice. Add it to the plot. All right, and this is sort of like what a typical drone rat looks like. Notice how it has that 20% better armor and shield resists for kinetic compared to EM. But as I said, the Tengu gets 25% damage. 25%, it's more than 20%. So you wanna use those uh, kinetic missiles. And then especially because it'll absolutely blast through the structure. Um, and then also worthwhile to mention is that the bounties for the rats are comparable to what you would see in drone hordes and stuff. So like there's no, we're gonna be skipping a lot of the rats, but there's no real downside to running the site and like doing the long route. We're gonna see that in the next room here. Let me just activate the gate and reload to Javelin, of course. Um, so there's no real downside to doing the whole site. Like you do get paid for all of the battleships you're killing. It's just that you aren't gonna have the chance of getting a 10 out of 10 escalation while doing a 10 out of 10 escalation. And if you can run 10 out of 10 escalations, you should probably be doing that instead of just regular riding. Anyways, we're now in the next room, and this room we're going to skip. So we're going to head over to the surging acceleration gate and go the shortcut route. Um, this is the gate you would take if you were doing the main route, and it leads to another. This is the second room. There's four more rooms. This one, I think there's only like two more rooms before the final room. And you don't have to kill all of these guys. So yeah, shortcut. Nice. As I said, it does require this 17 million is key. This is a one-time use Zbikoki's hacker card. Um, when we try and take the gate with it on our cargo hold, it'll get consumed. And then we'll have 10 seconds where us or other people on our fleet can take the gate. If we ever have to leave after this, we get sent back to the start if we warp out. And then we would need another one to take the shortcut again. So you want to make sure you have enough missiles and nanite and other stuff. Um, you also need Plasma Physics 4 or some skill, you should look that one up uh, to be able to use this when you go through the gate. But yeah, I mean, look at all of these bad guys we're skipping. But then again, there's another millionesque. There's another millionesque. There's another millionesque. So I mean, if you do want to clear these, then you certainly can. I don't know if I've ever done the long route. Are any of these neutralizing towers? Ooh. Anyways, shortcut's the way to go. And then the next room and the room after that are gonna be the same deal of we use Javelin and clear the frigates. And then we either try and use drones while cruisers are still on grid and hope they don't get killed or pull them quickly if they start getting targeted or we kill the cruisers first and then use our drones and missiles on the uh, battleships. So this room here, again, we're gonna have some frigates to deal with. And there's also an elite something, I think, right? A sentient Elvis queen. So this is just, this one could have some nice drops. I didn't bring anything to salvage it, but I mean, it's not, that different from any of the other ones, right? Just slightly better resists, I think. E no, I don't know what it does. It's just slightly better. <laughs> all right, let me clear all of these guys the same way as before. Shoot, I wasn't counting volleys. And then we'll see what the sentient left us as well.
All right, so sometimes when you take the shortcut after clearing something or other, you can get this kind of bug that it's completed. So hopefully we don't have to leave the site now because I'm not sure if it would be here when we come back. <laughs> the Kurai Strain Mother is the thing we have to kill at the end and it is not currently dead. All right, let's finish off the sentient here and see what we get. reload into javelin as usual and ooh a sentient drone damage amplifier 110 million so this is just a lucky drop and it's one of the reasons why you can get uh, more from the sites so usually you would only get a couple million from that but I'm already up a hundred million so now instead of getting when I say around 400 million now instead of getting 375 million I'm looking at like uh, 475 million site which is pretty nice. All right, into the next room. So this is the final one before the final room. <laughs> it's the same as the others. Uh, there is a 50 million drop though, from like the good ship in that room, the cool ship, the special ship. But other than that, it's gonna be the same. So we come in, what we're gonna do is clear the frigates that are nice and close to us here. And then we will start working on the cruisers and then the battleships. Uh, there are turrets here, and the PDS ones can hurt your drones, I, so we'll be keeping that in mind while we're going. All right. Oh yeah, look at that, we're already tackled. Time to take some frigates out. Um, in the final room, we're gonna be getting webbed a fair amount, and that's gonna be like what causes us to not be able to tank the whole site just like, and go for the drone mother herself. We'll have to kill some DPS before we get to her. But until then, where's that cool one? Let me just lock her up. And then I'll do the same thing and just clear this room. And then we'll see what we get. That, there we go. The drone supreme defender. So she also runs from us. So we're gonna wanna try and push her over towards the rest of them. But in a Loki that only has that 30 kilometer range instead of the Tengu that has like the 40 kilometer range, we're probably gonna have to go and deal with them and then come back for her instead. But maybe while we kill these cruisers, we'll try and push her towards the acceleration gate. All right, so my corralling wasn't uh, super effective there, but you know, see how far she is from the gate that I have to go back to at the end, but not too bad. And I did want to show you her uh, stats here. So her armor resists are even between kinetic and EM. Her shield is 40% higher, but watch how fast her shield, oh, good, good God drones, don't go over there. Uh, watch how fast her shields drop here once I start shooting her, like, couple volleys and they're gone, right? So the EM resist here doesn't really matter. It's mostly her armor that takes a while to break down. So even if you were in the Tengu, I would just stick with Kinetic here. Not worth reloading into EM. Um, all right, and then we're just going to start pushing her towards the gate by being on the far side of her. And she wants to run from us. Keep at range 250. Hmm. Was I sniping with artillery? <laughs> Um, yeah, all right, and then we're going to kill her, loot her, and then head into the final pocket. 
Now the final pocket is going to be a little bit different because it's not just a free-for-all. The big drone mother is going to web out to 50 and we want to stay more than 50 away from her until we take enough DPS off the field. And the there's also a nuding tower over to our left when we come in that we want to stay away from throughout the entire site. So we're going to start off by going to the right and kind of doing a square. We're going to go right, then up, and then left, and back and forth a little bit, and then finally dive in and kill the drone mother. So what do we get from her? 50 million, I think. 51.7. 19th tier. Oh, oh, come back, drones. No, don't fight towers. All right. And I'm going to reload into EM Javelin. We're also going to use the Nova Javelin in here in the final room. So let's get in there. I haven't been timing it, but I feel like we've probably used up half the time so far, and then <laughs> most of the time is spent in the last room. Uh, as you can see, though, it's not as straightforward as just like spinning an Ishtar. I'm actually targeting things and shooting things and reloading. Uh, a Tengu, it's a little bit easier because you're not worried about your drones and you're just shooting stuff until they die. But a Tengu, you do have to count your volleys more. Okay, I'm going to stop comparing them now. I'm done talking about them. All right, so here we are. Here's the nuding tower. Stay away from that. And here is the mother. Stay away from that. So we're going to head over to the right and we're going to orbit this cruise missile battery at 3000 and start killing frigates. Um, these frigates are going to web us and point us and do all sorts of nasty things. Cool. So again, ideally, we are counting our volleys here. I'm going to shoot four and see if that takes out that one. If not, then I'll just fire another its way in a sec. doesn't look like it did, so I'll shoot five at this one. These frigates, like depending if they're strain or devilfish or barracuda or stuff, have different tanks, and I think they have like a percent chance for shield wrap. So um, I just more eyeball it. Once they're like in structure, I see them one volley, I'll finish them off, and I try and just sort of have a sense of how many volleys are on the way. <laughs> if you're flying these in Marauders, what people do is they like MJD out a couple, kill just the drone mother from super far range and then warp out after bookmarking it and warp back in and then uh, loot it. So that's that approach, kind of like what you would do if you were running the maze um, in an Ishtar. All right, this is the last frigate. Nice, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my long range and shoot these cruisers that are far away. So this is out to 60. Let me just turn off my prop here for a second, give them a, catch, a chance to catch up a little bit. And here's where I really should be counting because um, they're so far away. I've got so many missiles in flight. I'm sure it's fine. Come on, cruisers, come closer. And then these big ones I'll switch to rage for. It's my plan. Sixty-three kilometers, according to the in-game, but of course there's some that are going to fly shorter than that, and some that are going to fly longer. And then you use Pypha, and it'll tell you exactly what percentage you can expect. But yeah, so we're just going to orbit this while we clear, out, clear off all the cruisers. Okay, hopefully we'll four finish that one off. There are some other cruisers way over here. These ones I'm just going to leave the whole time. All right. Oh, I got into a reload. Shoot. So ideally there, I would have stopped before reloading, and I would have switched to Rage. I guess since I've already reloaded, I'm just going to stick with Javelin rather than spending the time to reload. I mean, i got to get that efficiency up, right? <laughs> uh. All right, that should be enough to kill him. If not, he gets to survive. All right, so now I'm switching to Rage for these guys, although it might have been better just to stick with Javelin there. I don't know. I messed it up already. I'm playing it by ear now. All right, well, I'm, oh, this one's still alive. Well, I'm killing these guys, these Hive Defenders. 
uh, do a fair amount of damage and notice that they're 20% difference on shield on armor and 40% difference on shield. So this is where the EM is actually their strongest resist. So this is why I bring that Nova, just so that I can kill these guys with half a clip of the Nova Javelin. If you were using a Tengu, then you'd just be shooting Kinetic, which is perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, these guys you don't necessarily have to kill. There are how many of them? Let's see. High defenders, one, two, three, four. So I usually kill two, and then I just ignore the other two and just tank them while killing the drone mother and then looting and then leaving. So they just get to live. However, if you're not flying as blingy a tank, then you might want to kill um, all four of them or three of them. And if you're super, super tanked, then maybe you can keep them all alive and just dive straight in on the drone mother. It's really up to you. Okay, cool. Oh, I guess I'll fire one more just in case. All right, so now I am switching to the Nova Javelin and I'm going to orbit this guy at just 500. So I came in over here and came to the, this direction and now I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna go between these two drone batteries while killing two of the Hive Defenders. So Hive Defenders, please. Perfect, and the range on these again is 60. And if I orbit this at 3,000, I'm going to come into range of the Kuri Strain Mother. I guess I can lock her up to keep an eye on her range. Uh, so I don't quite want to do that. Instead, I will just orbit it, and I'll just do an about face and come back if I have to. Obviously not keeping my transversal up very nicely if I stop and turn around on a dime. But uh, my tank really hasn't had any issues so far, eh? Maybe I should just dive in with only one of them killed and kill the other one on the way in. Should I be daring? I do have my blue pill. Ooh. Let's see if this one's at least dead. So again, I have 66, so I want to stop on 33 and put half a clip into him. And that should be enough to kill him. 39, 38, 37. The little bit of the timing can be messed up there. Oh yeah, there we go. So that should be enough to kill one. And oh, there's this close one here I'll kill. All right, cool. So he's loaded up and this clip is gonna be enough to kill him. So I guess I can just dive in on the strain mother. What's the worst that can happen? Um, I am gonna want my drones out shortly. These two cruisers here, out oh, there I'm being webbed by her. I'm within 50 kilometers now. Um, these two cruisers might go after my drones. So as I'm coming in on the strain mother, I wanna be applying damage to her after this hive defender dies, but um, I'm gonna have to need long range because I'm not within 30 of her and I'm moving extremely slowly. So I think I'll take these guys out first with Javelin and then start applying to her and then put my drones out. I really don't want my drones to die because this is gonna take ages still. So um, we want to keep them alive for their DPS. Okay, I don't wanna reload these. So we'll go to Javelin. I will put my drones on her now. Um, and then if these cruisers start attacking them, hopefully my javelin will take them up quick enough. All right, and we're basically done the site. All I have to do is kill this thing. And we'll look at its stats in just a second here. I realized I haven't talked about the queens at all. They are irrelevant in the final room. I just tank them, don't kill them. Maybe I should be brave in the future and just go for like leaving a cruiser alive if it requires a reload over here. And oh, see, this cruiser's smoking my drones now. Kill it quick. Come on, missiles. Okay, that should be good. Um, or leave more of the drone hive defenders alive and see if I can tank them. Anywho, uh, yeah, all the threats are dead now. So here's this nuding tower, and I want to make sure I stay more than 30 kilometers away from it. That's its nuding range. I'm 80 at the moment, and once I start orbiting the strain mother at like three kilometers or whatever i won't come within range of it so that's completely safe and she's now within 30 so i'm going to switch over to rage and then start chipping away so let me just get these firing and then we'll take a look at her perfect so her resists are higher EM in the armor, 
but her armor wears down pretty quick here, right? Like we're chunking through it and then it's gonna be gone. And her structure where she has no resists is the main thing to chew through. It's something like, I could look up the stats, but it's ridiculous. It's like 50 million bajillion hit points. Like <laughs> we're almost through her shields and armor. Watch how slow the structure starts going down. It's gonna take, I think like six or seven maybe eight of these, it's gonna take like seven minutes of just shooting this one thing, right? Extremely, extremely slowly. So back to the resists. Shield, EM's good to shoot through, but again, we're gonna get through the buffer of the shield quickly. Armor, again, ideally you'd be shooting um, explosive or kinetic. I mean, we get through it so quickly, it's a non-factor. The main thing is the structure where you just want max damage because it has no resists. However, you'll notice her shield seems to be boosting up a lot. Um, this is actually because she has very little shield and a very, very high shield peak regen. Okay, so I believe she is regenerating um, 50 shield hit points every second, which is, you know, 100 every two seconds and Tengus and Lokis are gonna be firing every two seconds, roughly. So she's generating like 100 shield points every two seconds um, when our volley set, and we're volleying for however much, 1390, I guess, and a Tengu would be doing like 1500, maybe. So <laughs> the math of that works out too. As the Tengu pilot, you still wanna shoot EM at her, uh, sorry, uh, Kinetic at her for that extra 25% damage. Even though it looks like she's doing massive shield reps and she has high shield kinetic, or at least higher than EM by more than 20%, or more than 25%, the bonus the Tengu gets, because she's bleeding uh, structure constantly and you're overwhelming the shields, you still want to shoot kinetic. Um, to put that another way, she's repping 100 shield every um, volley, okay? You're doing like, what was it? 1500 in the volley. So instead of repping like 100, she's technically repping 135 if you count in effective hit points. But like, that's just a drop in the bucket compared to how much uh, your volley's doing. So you'd rather have all of that excess damage carry over into structure. So yeah. If you're in a Tengu, use Kinetic throughout the entire site because most of the rats have 20% better Kinetic than EM and you have a 25% bonus to damage. And in the final lady here, she does have higher shield than Kinetic EM. It's greater than 25% at 35%, but it's piddling compared to her structure where you just want that raw damage of any type going through. And for those Hive Defenders, you also want to be shooting kinetic because their armor kinetic's actually one of their lower ones compared to EM. And in the Loki is the one where you want to bring explosive to shoot through their armor. All right, so now we're just letting her slowly, slowly get whittled down. As you can see, I'm as close as I ever get here to the drone neutralizing thing, and I'm still 45 away, so well outside of 30. And then after killing her, we're gonna loot her and that's it, we're done.
One thing I forgot that I used to do was turn off auto reload in the final room before this part here. And that way I don't accidentally reload into um, explosive or whatever if I don't want to. Okay, and one other trick. If you happen to have the exact same skills and implants and fit as I do, uh, usually this last little bit of hull requires one more reload. But if you overheat extremely carefully, you can get it without having to reload again. So the last thing you want to do here is burn out your guns and lose the entire... Okay, there she goes. <laughs> Maybe that was uh, when I was, maybe I've gotten improved skills since then. Oh, come back drones, don't die. All right, and we'll see what we got in the final boss. But yeah, a little bit of heat there at the end, just so you don't go into another reload. If it seems like you might, can't hurt. Unless you burn out your guns and then can't break her and the sites despawn because you took the shortcut and terrible, terrible things. So here's sort of like the standard amount, right? Um, we're getting the 23rd tier overseer, which is guaranteed for 134 million, plus the 50 million one we got before for 200 million. All of this uh, fancy salvage, which accounts for another 100 million ish. So, yeah, 350 million minimum, and then up to 450 million if you get a sweet, sweet sentient drone drop like I did. Uh, averaging around 400 million and if you're buying them off Zulus then that's 130 million plus your 20 million in missiles and the hacker key so you're making about I mean the site probably took me longer than 45 minutes because I was talking and I'm a little rusty but I mean you can chain these for roughly 200 million an hour as long as you have the skills and the capital to fit it um, yeah it's a good option uh, loot quickly becomes a problem because of some of these things and how many missiles you need. You'll notice I started with 2,000 of these, but just did one clip as suspected. So you could bring a few less of these if you wanted to. Um, the EM Javelin, I started with 5,000. I've only used uh, 800. But then the Rage are the main ones, right? I brought 10,000 and I used 5,000. So if you need 5,000 Rage missiles for every um, one of these you run, and you probably don't want to be gating around in, I mean, you're already in a billion ship. You don't want to be gating around with 500 million in loot as well. Anywho, uh, yeah, that's it. So the rest of these guys, I'm going to leave alone. And I mean, as I said, you can kill them for a million isk each or do the entire long non-shortcut route for a million isk, for more a million isk bounties. And some actual loot the other route as well, although I haven't done it. Maybe I've done it once when I was first starting out just to try it. Um, I definitely suggest using the shortcut and then chaining these if you can, because 250 million isk an hour or whatever is better than 100 million isk per hour. All right, I think that's all I got. And hopefully you got something from this as well and you can try it out. And if it is going to take you longer to run it, like I wouldn't suggest trying this in the Praxis with drones. I mean, I guess if you want to try and dual box it with like two Ishtars or something so that you have more DPS, then that's like an option. But selling it for 130 million as a bonus is great rather than running it and just like moving on. It's like you're gonna make more that way than fiddling around with this. But once you have the means to actually run these, they certainly are an improvement on just spinning Ishtars with the major huh, um, note that if you do get caught on a gate then and get killed for whatever reason, or you DC or whatever, I mean, you're flying something a lot more expensive. If neutrals had come into the system and started hunting me down with combat probes and I felt the need to warp out, I might have lost the site altogether. And that could be a big, like 130 million you paid and you didn't re even recoup your costs. Um, and of course it's focus, right? Like I'm flying around, it's a little bit easier in the Tengu because you aren't managing your drones, but you're still like ABing around, targeting things, firing things, reloading, remembering to turn your guns back on, which I'm not very good at apparently, counting volleys and stuff like that. So yes, you're making, if you're buying them off Zulus, 200 million an hour instead of 
70 million spinning an Ishtar or 100 million maybe in a higher BRM system. Um, but it requires a lot more focus. So you're paying for, or you're getting paid for doing work. All right. I don't know what side of the, f the Loki is the front. But anyways, hope you got something from that and I'll see you around.